I mean, I was an anesthetist. I didn't know anything about mental health. And then when I started to learn about it, and, I real, and God showed me how the medications could help set people free from depression, anxiety, and, and mood swings. And that medicines really had a role. So I started to treat Christians very aggressively. If they came into my office and had the disorder, I treated them. And so I got all kinds of criticism from the Christian community that I was giving secular or even demonic pills to Christians when it was a faith issue and they shouldn't be taking medicine. So many Christians came off their medicines because Christians or any Christian leaders told them to never come back and see me. I represented Satan. Oh dear. So, so, I, so I took a lot of heat from, from, from people who took the extreme view. But you did enlarge your territory. Yeah, fortunately, what happened, God in, in my training course, so I had great success with medicines, but I didn't know and understand the other deliverance, inner healing, count. I didn't understand those methods. Even spiritual warfare. Yeah, I didn't really know much about that either. So I was raised in the church, so I didn't know anything about demons. <laughs> and so then, so then I had demonic manifestations in my office. People, evil spirits started speaking out of people and grabbing them right in my room. And so that was kind of hairy. And so I had to learn about the spiritual part. And that's where Neil Anderson's books, The Bondage Breaker, helped me tremendously. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, at that point, I thought I was balanced. I understood the medic medical and the spiritual. But then we had a marriage crisis, as we've already talked about. And there was no pill for that. And it wasn't deliverance. It was baggage. So God, in his mercy, walked me through the three parts. And then I thought, well, maybe other Christians need to know this. And I wrote the book. The three parts then are? There's physical issues. There's spiritual issues and there's personality issues. The Bible says there's, we are body, soul, and spirit, which is body, personality, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And so we can have problems in each of those three areas that affect our mood, relationships, thought processes. And God showed us that we can, He wants to help us in all three of those areas. So in the physical realm, those are the psychiatric disorders, depression, anxiety, and mood swings. In the spiritual realm, that's the harassment of Satan. And in the personality area, the wounds of our past, the baggage, the strongholds, the lies that we believe affect our relationships and our thinking. And in the lives of so many, emotional unwellness is the Achilles heel. You call oh, it absolutely. the Achilles heel. Yeah, I think that's the number one reason for spiritual weakness and spiritual sliding out of the kingdom. That's the number one reason for marriage and relationship failure. I think it's the number one reason for trouble at work. Relationship, personality issues. Emotional baggage is universal. Today we're focusing on oh, fear, worry, and anxiety. I think we all can relate to having moments, maybe chapters of those three things, one or all of them. When do you know that it's a mood disorder? Yeah, that's a very important question is how do you know who needs medicines for their fears and who's just having a normal life experience? Yeah. Like there is such a thing as normal fear and anxiety and that is to be afraid of driving too fast and going off the edge of a cliff. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's appropriate. But what I treat is the roadblock fear or the kind of fear that damages your life, like it restricts your life. So that's, that's the problem fear. But the way you tell- Like agoraphobia. You, you, you don't want to leave your house. Yeah, that's true. And so, so that would be, that actually is in the medical zone. Oh. So the way you tell if it's a chemical imbalance mood disorder is if you can't shut your mind off. So that's the key diagnostic symptom for depression, anxiety, or bipolar. If you can't shut your mind off over long periods of time, like just over years or months, not just a, one evening, if you can't shut your mind off, that means you have a serotonin or a chemical imbalance. So your, your nerve cells aren't working properly and you've lost thought control. So if you have an anxiety disorder, you lose thought control and you, and you can't stop worrying. If you have depressive disorder, you lose thought control and you just become very negative. If you're bipolar, you can go swing from two down to two pumped and driven. So that's how you tell if it's chemical. Also, in the book, in, in, there's a chapter in the book with checklists of symptoms so you can do a self-assessment. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, because people, people will go to the doctor and say, I have headaches, and he's not going to say, well, are you too worried? which is making you have headaches. So I tell people, do your own self-assessment before you go to the doctor. Go to the doctor with your symptoms organized. So take the chapter with all these self-assessment questionnaires, do depression, anxiety, mood swings, underline all the symptoms that you see in yourself, and you take the book to the doctor and say, this is what I'm experiencing, and then you'll likely get the right treatment. Now you put these guys together because they're, they're friendly monsters. They, they connect to one another. You give three causes of fear. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, the same way there are three parts to humans and three links in our chain of emotional bondage, there are physical causes of fear, there are spiritual causes of fear, and there are personality causes of fear. So the physical causes are the anxiety disorders, which we were just speaking of. So that's when you have a brain chemical malfunction and you can't stop worrying. So that's treated by a doctor with medications or pray, praying for physical healing, of course. Then in the spirit realm, Satan wants to keep you fearful. So he wants to insert fearful thoughts into your mind. Mm -hmm. And then in the personality area, if you've been raised by fearful parents, for example, they will teach you that fear is your lifestyle. So fear, being fearful is just something you learn. So in that scenario, fear is a learned behavior. Mm, it's been modeled. Yes, exactly. Yes. Now, in the demonic interference, you say that a, a very popular missile mm -hmm. of Satan into your brain is, what if? Yes. What if? And, and, and isn't this where we have the, the famous quote, you know, 90% of what we worry about never happens? Oh, absolutely. And God showed me, because he, he was teaching me how to separate a demonically inserted thought which is just there to torment you from a, a legitimate reasonable thought. And so what God told me is the next time, for me personally, the next time I get a thought that really makes me frightened, he said, check to see if it started with what if. So I like to think what if is, are the words on the nose cone of a demonic thought missile. And so, because what if are usually the thoughts that torment us the most. Mm -hmm. that make us fearful. So when you get a what if thought that's very disturbing or anxiety provoking, consider that it probably has a dark origin and that way you can repel it. And take every thought captive right. to make it obedient to Christ. Don't let him take you down that rabbit trail. Christians are hard to treat. Yes, quote, absolutely. Quote, unquote, because. Well, because they over spiritualize things. You see, in the mental health realm, we're talking about thoughts. And so Christians assume that all thinking is spiritual. Well, thinking has spiritual side effects without question, but the origin of your thoughts and the control of your thoughts is physical. So I've spent my entire career arguing with Christians to try to convince them that they have a physical disorder with spiritual symptoms that needs physical treatment. And so I have so much trouble getting them to stay on their medicine because they say, no, fear is, a, fear is a spiritual issue because the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. So it's a command, so that way, but if you have anxiety disorder, you can't stop worrying. It's physical, it's, it's, it's a chemical imbalance. You need medicines to stop it. But there's so much intimidation and you know the, the, the stigma of not having enough faith. Yes, exactly. Shouldn't God heal you? Mm -hmm. Now, how do you know when, I, I guess you don't know, do you? Because sometimes God does heal. Oh yes, I've had lots of my patients entrenched healed. entrenched disorders. Oh yes, I've had a number of people healed. And in fact, it, it's so, it, it, I even have a, a, a video on my website is how to know when you're healed from a mood disorder. How to know when you can come off your medicines because I've had a number of my patients healed. Some even after I prayed for them. Instantly. Wonderful. It's, it's, so it's actually happened, I've documented it. But here's, here's what happens. If you've been healed, your mind clears, you have full thought control. See, the purpose of the pills is to give you back thought control if you've lost thought control, depression, anxiety, mood swings. So if your mind suddenly clears and you have thought control and you're no longer disturbed by tormenting thoughts, something has changed. So I I've actually have a little video explaining that process. And I've noted here there are nearly 40 antidepressants for some, the challenge to get the right one. Yeah, it's trial and error. Oh, that can be a journey, can't it? Yes, that, that was actually my role, was helping people find the right medicines to try to encourage them that, okay, this one may not work, but the next one might, and you just have to keep trying them until you find the right one and your mind clears. But it's worth it. So it's worth the pursuit of the right medicine. Some people, after one or two, they just give up. Well, we're here to say, keep going. This is a winnable war. Now, apart from all the recognized disorders and, and, and causes of fear. We now live in a world where you can legitimately wake up afraid. Mm, yes, yes. Um, you can choose to be afraid. Really? If there's enough, if you just keep reading the papers. So what do you say to it's, somebody who, who's succumbed to that? Well, if they have a medical condition, of course, get it treated. But for the average Christian who's fearful but is not needing medications, the key is, I have the mind of Christ. Jesus didn't worry about anything. And when he was, he could have, I mean, there were people trying to kill him, but he didn't worry about anything because of his relationship with his father. And he had such an intimate relationship with, the father, with God the Father. God the Father was just constantly reassuring him and pouring into him. And we can have the same relationship. Perfect love casts out fear. 
and we can have perfect love as we connect intimately to God the Father. So we're to live like Jesus did. Well, that, uh, that's a, what, what better model could there be than that? And I, I just today read this by Francis Roberts. Relinquishment of burdens and fears begins where adoration and worship of God become the occupation of the soul. That's a pretty singular focus. It's as we connect with the love of Father God, our anxieties can melt away because we can just follow the, the lifestyle of Jesus. He walked in perfect love. <laughs> Here's a little bit of a lighter prescription, doctor, from someone else for worry. Schedule all your worrying for a specific half hour about the middle of the day, then take a nap during this period. What do you think, Doc? Well, think it's worth a it? try. It's worth a try. <laughs> <laughs> this has been wonderful. And um, I just can't say how grateful I am for all that you have brought to us. There's so much need. And please know right now that our prayer partners are ready to pray for you, whatever's robbing you of your joy and freedom today. <laughs>